you were told that you never needed to worry about the debt because it's manageable. Well, right now, it's not. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Let me be honest with you. Let me tell you the truth. The debt isn't manageable, even when it was at those super low interest rates. But now that we've moved that up, just the interest payments on the debt are now more than basically anything. One of the largest expenses for the governments. And you are looking at this becoming mathematically impossible to pay back. Except, except... If you pay much, much higher taxes and they cut your services down considerably. This is the new world that we're walking headfirst into. Today, we're going to talk about that debt. We're going to look at what central banks have been doing. And I'm going to show you why we are in for a rude awakening this year in 2024. So I want to begin by taking a look at the U.S. national debt topping $34 trillion for the first time in history. Are you surprised? <laughs> of course not. Everybody knew that was coming. It was just like 33 and 32 and all the ones before it. They spend more and more and more. And quite frankly, they are never able, never able to resolve this they want to create more debt. Why? Because this is a debt-based system. We don't have a real system, a financial system that is strong, that is there to support people, to support the middle class. That's not how it works. They want to create a divide in between the rich and the poor. And I will tell you how that works today. Many people believe there's a level of incompetence here, that there's a level of arrogance, in fact. But I'm here to tell you why it's not. Everything is going according to plan. I have read the history all the way back to the great inflation of Athens and every single situation since. Now, let's look at this. You could see it. How central banks save the world and will again. Ah, that's right. That's right. They save the world. In fact, this reminds me a lot of, if you remember, Ben Bernanke had his face real big on the front cover of the Atlantic. And it said, hero. That's right, hero uh, for devaluing the currency. You see, that's what they think of central bankers. And certainly most investors do agree. They believe that they save the world and they love their actions. Back in 2008, leading into 2009, if you remember, I mean, I, I remember vividly, and I've also seen the videos many times since, where you would have people in the U.S. Congress saying, excuse me, Fed, what are you trying to do? You're printing money and you're buying this stuff? What are you going to do with it? Where's it going to go? How's this all going to work? You better have an answer for us. What's going on? How much money are you spending? What are you doing to the currency? And now today... Please, please, Federal Reserve, please help us out. Things have really changed in this short period of time. You see, something drastically occurred during this time frame in which we went from Federal Reserve, you better stay right there, okay? We understand you want to help, but hold on a second. You can't just do whatever you want. To 2020, where it was like, how much more are you willing to do? Can you just can you just buy everything? Oh, yes, we will. Oh, we'll buy mortgage-backed securities when the housing market is absolutely on fire. I mean, you got to be out of your mind to agree with that. But that's what they did. They also bought corporate debt. Imagine buying corporate debt of the biggest companies in the world. They were buying corporate debt of Apple. Why were you doing a bailout of Apple? That's what that is. It's a stealth bailout of Apple and other big companies just like it. They had money. They, they don't need to worry about that. But you were helping them out. Yes, that's what happens. You could see overwhelmingly, you know, you look around the world, look at the interest rates. And it just shows us this is uh, global, uh, global-rates.com. And when you look at this, you will see the third last column. Uh, if you're looking there, you'll see red and green, basically just telling us, are they increasing rates or are they decreasing rates? Okay. And so green, if you can't see that, I know it's a little small. Green means they are decreasing rates. And then on the right hand side, we can see the change. So when did they do that change? And generally, it depends on where you look, but generally we are seeing globally 
the rate cuts are starting to come. That's what we are seeing. Now, obviously, the Federal Reserve being the most important, no, no matter where you are, it is very interesting to just see how these central banks on the newer cuts, they've started to go, you know, on the newer actions, I should say, have started to go into cutting. Also, they are trying to stimulate as opposed to necessarily, you know, try to constrict and tighten. Because why? Because there had been inflation. Okay, so they started to increase their interest rates. They started to tighten up. Let's get serious. Let's get you know, this under control. But now the economies have started to weaken. And so they say, what do we got to do? Let's get that stimulus to happen. So countries likely would try to leave it as long as they possibly can before they do that. Because that's your firepower. That's your ammo. And if you want that, you know, you've got to preserve it. You can't just go and, and use it off. You, you need to be mindful of that, okay? Um, and basically, this is just talking about, I mean, it, there's a lot in here, but there's reasons to feel that 2024 could be a great year. And these are some of the things, okay? There's no question there are some positives to this. What about this? Demand for labor is strong. There's still 8.6 million job openings begging for willing workers. Maybe they're not the jobs that people want, but anyway, they're there. The onshoring boom is boosting capital spending and promising to end the manufacturing recession. I'm not sure that's ever going to happen. Housing is set for recovery due to the plunge in mortgage and interest rates in early November. Yeah, recovery being higher prices, that is. Corporate cash flow is at a record high. Uh, they're not spending, they're not buying like they did before. And yet a lot of the companies, service-based industries are doing well. Inflation is turning out to be transitory. Pretty funny. That's a hilarious thing to write down. The inflation of goods was back down to 0% in November and so on. Okay, so there are some things, whether, you know, I don't agree with all of that, obviously, but there are some things that are here and now that would suggest, I'm, I'm talking about their stats, by the way, the CPI, the PCE, there are things. And you look at it, I mean, people are still going out. You know, it's not a complete depressionary scenario they are going out they are going to the restaurants they are shopping you can see that but they're deal hunting they're being more choosy about where they do this things are different instead of going to the restaurants you know once a week maybe they're going once a month you know they're, they're making these decisions right now and that's happening broadly across all sectors we have seen what i have seen personally in my business um looking at it higher costs there, there's no question that there are higher costs higher shipping costs we are seeing higher warehousing costs the employees they want more money of course and the material the input costs the raw materials are more expensive you put that together that's squeezed on the margins one of those aspects i don't use debt in my company personally however a lot of companies do use debt so that's another place they are being squeezed. And so when you do that, one after the other, after the other, some are saying, I, I can't do business anymore. So they start laying people off. That's the, the issue here. Now, if the central banks go out and they start cutting interest rates dramatically, this could turn things around and create much more inflation. Like, I don't know if it's going to show up in the CPI. I, I really don't know. That's such a manipulated stat. However, I do know that this creates price inflation as a result of easier monetary policies. We've seen it so many times before. I don't need to prove that to you because I know it. Some would actually argue that printing money the way that they do, quantitative easing, actually creates deflation. Now, for those people, whatever it is, what whatever um, you know, drug you're doing or whatever. I'd be interested to know what it is. I want to study it. I want to see the effects on the brain. And uh, I'd be interested to know more about that. Okay. Uh, the Fed will set the pace for markets more than ever this year. And that is absolutely true because they're watching that. They're paying close attention to that. And the expectation is perhaps March. March will be when they cut rates officially. If not, though, I'm saying this now. and We'll see what happens by then. That they might just signal what they plan on doing, okay? They might not go all the way out. They might just be signaling it. 
And we'll see. We'll see what happens. But this is very important because they're looking closely, very closely at the Fed, no matter where you are around the world, because a lot of their action, then, oh, okay, the Fed did it. Okay, now we can do it. That, that was happening a lot um, during this previous cycle. And seeing where we are right now, it looks like, I mean, you could measure interest rates in different ways. We can look at the Fed funds rate, for instance, obviously, but we can look at the bond market. So this is the two-year treasury, and you see that it peaked out approximately 5%. So there it was at 5%. People were putting their money in and it was the same for even shorter term debt. So you were getting really good rates of return on short term debt. And that's really important to note, um, but it has definitely come down. So we'll see, you know, as it fluctuates and so on, uh, where it goes. But that is an important thing because when you get more attractive rates on bonds, money can move into the bonds um, for obvious reasons. You have companies that you know are dealing with that they've got a you know, higher rates are, are not necessarily a, a bullish thing so we're gonna see how companies respond to it they've got too much debt this is a problem this is a problem overall okay so um you know but it really remains to be seen i think the most important thing is the expectation that the federal reserve is going to be cutting uh, rates. That is it. As I say here, for investors, 2024 is the year of transition to a new economic order. Investors appear convinced that central banks are close to a much-awaited pivot from raising rates to cutting them. 2024 could hold surprises as the world adjusts to an economic order where money is not cheap. Interesting. I don't know what's going to happen here, but you know how far they are able to go down. I know that they're just going to prolong the cuts, uh, you know, stretch that out. Even if they do, let's say cut in March, maybe the next one they'll say, "Hey, we're not going to do the next one right away. Let's wait a month." This and that. We're going to wait and see, just to kind of, you know, stretch that out. Because as I said, that's your ammo. You don't want to use it up all at once unless they got some other plans. I think they want that that cushion because they got the five and a quarter to five and a half percent on the Fed funds rate. And what we learned from the previous time they tried this, it was at approximately two and a half percent. They had very little cushion. And so it hit zero like so rapidly and that wasn't enough. So they needed to go out there and, you know, use everything they could. Big problem, big mistake. So now they are having that five and a quarter to five and a half percent. That is a much larger cushion so that they may not need to do so much money printing all right away. OK, so what I would love from everybody is if you want to know the truth, well, then you would join me on the small classes that I have, the live classes. I think this is the best way to actually learn and be prepared and take the right actions Yes, you have to invest your time. There's no question about it. Two hours every Friday night. I cover this. The link is in the description. If you want to get that, I updated it so that you can come here. You can read all the things that are included with that, included the new GPTs, which helps you be a better investor, smarter investor. That's coming right now. As soon as they make it available to me, I can release it. It's ready to go. Six hours of work that took me and then i actually included the thing where you can actually check out now you don't have to email me and all that stuff however if you want to there's a blue button you could find out more right there i want to appreciate you i uh, appreciate you for being here today to listen to me to see what's going to happen in 2024 as we go through this central bank cycle you've got to be aware of all this stuff and understand how this affects inflation it's ready to rock let me tell you okay hit that thumbs up button if you support the channel and of course don't forget to come back tomorrow because i got the latest and greatest information you definitely want to see. Take care. See you then.